Hi everyone, I'm just doing a quick video here for you on some low key work, just looking at basic dodging and burning. So it shouldn't be too long. I'm going to look at a couple of images. Uh, this one here from a recent workshop called Back to Black uh, with uh, model Amy and this closer up version here as well. And um, again, just looking at dodging and burning, um, also converting just to a straightforward black and white. Um, with this one I have already done some frequency separation um, for the, the skin tones etc. So if you're interested in that then I do have a video on YouTube under frequency separation. Take a look at that, probably one of the easiest ones that you'll find to follow with lots of information on a text layer that you can turn off and on as you work. Anyway, um, so we're going to look at these two low key work, black and white and dodging and burning basically pulling out the shadow detail where you need to based on the original image which if we look at reset was that you can see that's fairly dark um, but it is correct for the skin tones which really is important particularly if you've got someone with lighter skin so let's take a look hi i'm tony bramley i've been a professional photographer for over 25 years i help people just like you with my one-to-one -one training and group workshops i provide judging for camera clubs and also like you shoot just for fun Join me as I pass on a few wise words and probably some stupid ones too in a creative world called photography. So I think I said with one of my um, more recent videos, um, I will actually leave mistakes that I make as I go along and I'm quite into allowing that to come through now because we all kind of like work on Lightroom Photoshop etc at different times and sometimes there's just things we don't do that often and maybe you just forget and I'm just the same even though I started with Photoshop back in the I guess late 1990s so for a change I'm going to do this in Lightroom so that will help and um, keep happy some Lightroom users but generally I do this in Adobe Camera Raw when I'm working within Photoshop and um, really very 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 similar to Lightroom so uh, let, let's try this in Lightroom and see how we get on. Um, I'm working on a Mac, so if I say Control, then um, you know that's unlikely because that's for Windows, but I will be using the Command key, which is exactly the same. So uh, Command or Control, just think the same. One's Windows and one is Mac. And um, I tend to use, I tend to use shortcuts and I don't always remember them all which is why I have this here so if you want to take a screenshot of this I do have reminders both sides in Lightroom here um, just on some of the shortcuts the ones that I tend to use more than anything else so let's just pull down to the bottom and you can take a screenshot of that if you want as well and make your own list okay all right let's crack on so let's take a look at this one first let's straight away turn that to black and white um, because I am doing this as a black and white option I would say normally I'd do some the main dodging and burning really in in color and then look at the black and white options afterwards but I really want to make these these two uh, well this one black and white and the, the, the closer up one a semi black and white on there so let's go over to basic lots of ways to change the black and white but let's go fairly simple with black and white there because really all of these presets is all about changing sliders and and just working the tones accordingly but if you want to you can come over to the profile browser take a look at uh, some of the presets that are in here so there's some black and white ones there um, and don't forget also there are new presets available within the latest versions of Lightroom as well as as um, Adobe Camera Raw so that's going to be just a straightforward black and white let's go in a bit closer using uh, command or control plus just to zoom in a little bit there and we can always um, zoom back in and out just using the space bar as well as I think it is the Z key so let's just drag that down there so you can see like Amy's face here is really you know just where you want it to be you could even say maybe a touch little bright okay and um, we haven't done any work on on this here so this is really taking a look at the the, um, the detail of the clothes um, so I might do just a, a little bit of work um, in a final image for this so face looks good uh, the the rim light around there the hair's not burnt out 
so that's good but let's just take a look at some of these darker areas here now when it was zoomed out you know it did look quite dense but actually when you zoom in you do start to see little bits of detail are there and I could see that on the back of my camera as well so just to give you an idea let's just pop the exposure up and you'll see what I mean there so there's plenty of detail there I can see how messy my black background is as well there so we will be sorting that out if any of that comes through so if we kind of like keep it like this you can see the um, the, the face is really far too bright although you quite like that kind of like high key effect in a in a low key environment and I know some people do like that but let's just take it down to where the correct exposure whatever that is works for that so simple dodge and burn really in Lightroom and we can start playing around with this background here as well so the first thing we're going to do, let's just take a look at um, some of these shadows first of all, see if we can work some of these shadows um, within the basics panel without affecting the, the face there. So shadows and blacks, probably more shadows. Let's pull some of those shadows out. So even going up to plus 50-ish, you know, the face is still looking pretty good. Let's just have a look down here. Stuff is starting to come through there. Um, if you're not sure, just you know, be quite aggressive with this stuff and see what's happening. So, yeah, shadows are coming out. Blacks will probably start to cause some of the more essential blacks to grey out, and you don't really want to do that. But let's just take a look and see what it does. It's always a worthwhile taking a look. And actually, it's not doing a bad job. Let's just check the hair there as we do that. So I don't usually like to be that aggressive with the black slider. Yeah, I think maybe about there, we've still got some lovely blacks, the background's looking good. The floor's starting to come through, but we can do some burning there as we start to work around this area. So yeah, shadows and blacks, have a look at that first of all, you can start to see some detail coming out. And that face is still looking good. Let's go over to a brush. So we're gonna go over to the masks and click on brush. And start to do some more kind of like traditional dodging and burning. So we're going to go down to exposure we want to increase exposure which is actually dodging rather than burning and with a quite a large brush using the bracket keys and just check this so size is good feather always like 100 percent and flow yeah around about half and i tend to like density on 100 some people prefer that the other way around but it kind of like works for me for what i do so i'm just using my scrolling um, a mouse by mistake there just to make that smaller so I've got to watch that and I am just for this I'm going to get rid of that um, that blue ring which is somewhere up here and um, we're working on black so you can see that fairly well so let's take a look then just using the spacebar so I can move around and just start pushing some exposure into these dark areas here okay just building up as I go so clicking and dragging just seeing how that looks might be a bit a little bit too big for along here so let's just take that brush down a little bit and keep this highlight here clear with the brushwork and just see what we can do here so I can see a little bit of overspill starting to come through there so we will check that out shortly uh, just bring this up a little bit here. Let's get a little bit closer. Just tease a bit more detail out there. And also just around here. Some of this stuff, you know, is low key. We can go to black. Um, I'm quite often saying protect blacks, but with low key, you know, it is also about blacks um, at the end of the day. And it's a case of where you want those to go. Okay, I'm just going to now, rather than keep building up um, just what, with one brush, I'm going to um, just take a look at another brush. Add another brush and I can build on top of the next one. So I just add it again, a little bit of exposure there. It's always a bit of a guess and you can always adjust it accordingly. So I'm just doing some detailing around here now, just bringing some of this up. clicking and dragging. I am using a mouse, but I would quite often use a, um, a tablet and work with a tablet and a brush accordingly. A lot easier when you're detailing in particular. So let's just zoom out of that a little bit. Move the exposure slider, see what's happening. 
and just gonna add a little bit more light here, just um, making that a little bit bigger. Just feed that in. Maybe a touch more down here. Add a little dab in here. Just open that up a little bit and that hair. Just put some light coming in on that hair there. Everything around here is looking good. Just a little bit, I think. Uh, and mid section here. look around there I'm gonna go just that top line of that hair there and we're gonna add another brush bring some exposure in just move that down yeah there actually is good detail in there but we're gonna just tease a little bit more out in this hair area not much if you're not sure just move those sliders you don't want to overdo it like that I'm going to take that back a little bit. Of course, if this is going into print, then do a test print, even though you're using um, a calibrated monitor and profiles for printers. Something like this really does demand a, a test print, and you might need to open up the blacks, depending on the paper you're using, um, because as some of you will know that some of these papers will really soak in the blacks quite a little bit, quite a lot actually, and um, Sometimes you just need to tweak a print once you've seen what it looks like coming through the printer. Okay, I mentioned about this part of the leg over here that's kind of overspilling. You can see just a little bit of glow coming in there. Um, we could kind of like burn that back in, but I'm going to go back to the original one down here and we're going to put in some negative brushwork here. So subtract from the mask. Just going to feed that in just to make sure that that darkens back down and we don't get a glow coming in. Just clicking and dragging accordingly. Just check up at the top there. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, I am gonna just burn that a little bit more as well. So I think probably on this second one here, there's a little bit of overspill, but let's just add a brush. Why not do some burning while we're here? So some negative exposure. Just feeding that in from the edge. I'm not going over on the line here. That's why I like a, um, a feathered brush because I can just feed it in, just slowly getting closer with, whoops, just move that brush, let's take that back. So just feeding it in, pushing it in a little bit closer each time until you're happy with the effect. I think just one more there would probably do that. Just zoom out and see how it looks. Yeah, that's good. Let's add another brush. And we're gonna sort this floor out. So we're gonna take the exposure down and um, we're also gonna get those blacks down and shadows down. Just see how that works. Cause that'll just help rather than just using exposure. You might even be able to do it without our exposure. So that's quite dark, isn't it there? Let's make that a little bit bigger. And just see what we can do there. I can always come back and adjust this so it's looking a bit too dark for me but we'll see how it looks try and keep a little bit of light going on around here so I'm gonna to have to detail around here if we need to so let's um, see how that looks with these sliders so let's just double click on the blacks yeah I'm just gonna see how that looks again I do quite like a little bit of those blacks coming through so let's take a look at the shadows not much happening with there, maybe a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna take that all the way back and try and use more shadows than exposure if I can. Just take a look at exposure, taking that back. Yeah, round about there. So let's take a look at some detailing now. I'm gonna come in around these feet, add a new brush. And let's go with negative exposure for this, I think. Especially as we've got blacks everywhere around here anyway. So I'm just gonna put some detailing in. These are actually marks um, on my background. So sometimes if you get marks like this, it's quite easy to 
just clone them out but we're on black so let's see what we can do with this remember the reason I'm going over these is that if you look um, here the flow is 49% so I'm just building up accordingly so I'm just gonna go a little bit bigger with this and again using the feather feed in from underneath just try and get a gradient work in there just go a little bit smaller and then zoom in a touch let's zoom out and see how that looks Okay, so that's brought kind of like the blacks on the clothing out a lot, lot better there. You know, one last thing I'd really do with something like this as well is we're going to look at a little bit more burning, but really on the skin tones. Certainly one thing to look out for is hands. You can see this hand's a little bit brighter than it needs to be. So let's try a little bit of highlights and negative exposure, and that way it won't do too much to the blacks behind the hand there. So there we go, that's coming down nicely. So we've just brought that down just maybe a little bit too much. So Command or Control Z will just undo the last stroke. Maybe another one. There we go, about there I think works. Uh, these are not too bad, maybe a little bit just on the fingers there. A touch like that. And then I'm just for the face, new brush again. And let's get those highlights down a little bit. Let's just see what that does on its own before we put any exposure in because that won't affect the black so much on there as well so just pushing over the face there clicking and dragging turn that to zero see that's too much just a little bit of highlights is all that's needed doesn't really need much in the way of exposure you could try exposure if you prefer that feel to it so i think somewhere about there and that should do it. Let's take a look. Press Z on the keyboard and that takes us to full screen. Let's click off of there and that'll get rid of all those markers. So there you go. There's some basic dodging and burning there. What I'd do beyond here is maybe then take a look at some dodging to paint in some light if I needed to. So maybe just to express a little bit more of um, this leg and some lighting coming around just to shape some of the curves, etc. But when you consider that compared to um, the original, then quite a big difference there. Yeah, dodging and burning, low key, but working black on black really. Do a quick reset and you can see quite a difference. And we undo that and back to where we were. Okay, that's that one. This one a little bit different. Like I said, I've already worked on some frequency separation with the skin here. Maybe a little bit too much for me. I'm not always overly keen on really, really smooth skin. I do like a little bit coming through. Uh, some people like this um, even more. It's really up to you. Uh, so I do quite like the fact that this is low key and some, some good darks coming through here because it's about this red supporting the face here and the glance of the eyes down there. But um, let's take a look at black and white does work as a black and white as well but the whole idea of that really was the red let's see if we do need any dodging and burning uh, just having a little assessment here maybe a little bit along there just opened up all of this looks pretty good maybe darken this down a little bit here because that's not necessary that little point there and possibly a little bit of opening up of the hair let's take a look at that so let's just try exposure so just run a little bit across there, something like that. Exposure is always a guess first time, so let's just see what that exposure is doing. Yeah, quite like that. Maybe take it a little bit further down there like that. Another stroke. Yeah, just kind of like brings that up quite nicely. 
and you can see because using a feathered brush it's kind of not really interfering too much there so let's add another brush just going to work with exposure let's see what we can do down here just opening up a little bit of the hair coming through just see how that looks yeah around about there so exposure going a bit closer and just with a smaller brush so we can detail if we need to yeah, in reality you know I think this is fine really this hair detail it is low key isn't it let's have a little play while we're there you can see that's brightening up I'm seeing brush strokes come through so I'm going to take that back a touch and we're keeping clear of that chin line so just going to click and drag to make some nice linear strokes there I think that will do the trick there so let's just go to brush and we've got a new brush and take the exposure down and we're going to just work on this little spot here just take that back a little bit of an edge flicker I sometimes call these things so there's a little bit of an intrusion off the edge there kind of takes your eye there just needs to come down a little bit like we've done there really I think that does the job so that's the dodging and burning on this one I said kind of like a, a semi black and white originally on this and normally I'd work this in Photoshop where I'd have a colored layer and a black and white layer then I'd bring the two together just bring some color through the black and white and you can do that with a, a mask pretty easily but um, the easy way to do it really although it doesn't allow full masking is to actually just look at saturation so if we go back to the basics panel and go down to saturation and it's all about just getting that red a little bit less intense so we're going to take the saturation down and just allow a little bit of that red coming through and then it kind of like produces a lovely effect which is not full black and white but you know particularly when there's kind of like very very muted colors going on it really can work quite well even in Lightroom without using the usual layers and like I said takes that intensity down on that so there we go dodging and burning in Lightroom for a change um, all of this can be done the same in Adobe Camera Raw a little bit of desaturation just to change the intensity of maybe colors that should only be supporting rather than dominating uh, composition yeah hope you enjoyed that I will just finish off by if you didn't get that at the beginning there's my shortcuts and if I have to put the top half there and there's the bottom half if you're interested in any of those do just take a screenshot of the whole screen or if you want just the little bits that are of interest to you or just note them down okay many thanks catch you again soon